welcome to the Marina Skewer podcast. My name's Marina. I'm a knitter, dyer, spinner, and general yarny crafty maker. Um, I'm recording in Bath, a city in the southwest England where I live. And this is a podcast about my making work. Um, so lots of yarn, lots of knitting, um, crafty things, and other things I like to make. Um, so in this episode I'm going to be talking about a couple of the things I've been knitting, a uh, knit along I've got going on that you can join in, um, also what happens when you're a bit rubbish at planning your knitting and it all goes slightly wrong and how I'm fixing that. Um, I'm going to show you how I make textured hand spun yarn, so it'll be a start to finish um, overview of you know how I take raw dyed fibre um, and then turn it into nice textured yarn. Um, I've also got a little uh, overview of how I make slow gin because I've just done that for the first time and I'd quite like to include little bits of seasonal making if that's something that you're interested in. Um, yeah, so recently I've been spending a lot of time working on the new website for Marina Skewer uh, I've just switched platforms, um, so hopefully the online shop now is super user friendly and it's much easier for me to manage new products and everything. Um, I've added some new information on there and the whole thing's had a bit of a redesign, so I really hope that's nice and friendly for people. Um, and I've also been doing a lot of tech editing for knitting patterns, um, both for independent designers and I'm working on my first publication which is really exciting. Um, so yes, I hope you enjoy today's episode and thank you so much for, well if you saw the last episode thank you so much for coming back, um, I was really encouraged by everyone's positive feedback um, and hearing that they were interested in what I had to say and that it was a nice little insight into how I make things because I, yeah, I, I like to show processes as well as just talking at the camera because I think that's nice to see and it's not necessarily something that people are aware of. Um, so yes, if you're checking me out for the first time, also thank you very much. It's lovely to see you here and I really hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to talk about a couple of the things I have on the knitting needles at the moment. Um, they're both things I've been working on for quite a while and they're what I've principally been working on while I've got other stuff in the background. Um, and I'm keen to finish both of them so that I can start new things because I have a bit of a cast on embargo at the moment with a one off, one on situation. So when I finish something, I can start something new. Uh, so the first one is an alpaca sleeveless jumper I'm making um, out of this gorgeous yarn. Um, it's not actually as soft as it looks. It's, this, uh, it's got a nice little fuzzy halo on it. Um, and I'm holding three strands of yarn together. So two white and one gray, which gives this beautiful mild effect, um, which I really love. Uh, this one's actually for a commission, so I'm making it for someone, um, because this would not fit me. It would be too large. Um, so I've been working it in the round up until now. Um, I finished the back, that goes up there, and then I've got the front um, where I've just split for the V at the front, because it's just going to be a nice classic V-neck. Um, so then I'll finish working the fronts and then add the ribbing for the neckline and the armholes um, and it's going to be all quite nice. I like working with this yarn even though it's not the softest um, because it's from a local alpaca farm um, and it's undyed so these are the natural colours of the alpaca um, and I just really like working with local yarns and um, I'm hopefully actually going to be stocking some of their baby alpaca which is much softer than this um, and I will tell you more about that in a future episode because it's all going to be very exciting. Um, yes so that's that one. I'm hoping to finish that by the weekend 
like definitely by the weekend. Um, I've just been working on it in the evenings um, around everything else because, well, I'm doing loads of stuff. And the other one is, ooh, you've seen this one before. Um, and it is progressing, it's taking a while. Um, I've sorted out some of the insane yarn situation that I was facing last time. Um, so these are my Mendic mittens. Um, you can see I've got my little provisional lines in waist yarn for the thumb holes. Uh, I've taken to actually putting little bits of tape on the yarn while I'm not working on it so that I can, um, so that it doesn't all unravel and get tangled in my knitting bag because I think I've spent approximately half the time I've been working on this project just untangling balls of yarn. Um, so it, it has been an interesting one, uh, choosing to work with the three colours at a time, two at a time, which means that I'm working with six balls of yarn. Um, it's slightly excessive. At least now I'm actually working from separate balls of yarn, not from the inside and outside of a ball, which is what I usually do, but that way madness lies. Um, and so because a few months ago I had quite a lot of problems with my wrist, um, I had a fairly bad injury literally from knitting too much with terrible technique. So I switched from English, which isn't inherently terrible, I was just terrible at it. I switched from English style knitting where you hold the yarn in your right hand to continental style yeah, um, where you hold the yarn with your left hand and it requires a lot less movement and that has helped enormously so I can knit for much longer without risking injuring myself and without it hurting a lot because no one wants that. Um, and so I got myself one of these little blubbers um, to help so that I, because I know a lot of people do colour work with one yarn in the right hand, one in the left or whatever variation they're upon. Um, even that was triggering some of my wrist rubbishness. So I got one of these. I don't like the fact that it's plastic. My friend Alex has lent me a metal one, but it only has two thingies, so you can only use it for two colours. But I need to try that one out. And so it's just a little yarn guide. And so as you're working with Continental, you have one colour yarn go through each of these little grooves, and then you close it down like that so they don't escape. And it's just really helpful. Um, yeah, highly recommend one of these. Um, it just keeps keeping things controlled during like colour work a lot easier. Because I was finding that as I was holding the different coloured yarns on my finger, they were just migrating together. So it was actually really slow to try and separate them out with the needle to work with them. Um, so that, yeah, recommend one of them. Um, that one's called a yarn guide. And then you can get Norwegian ones, which are like a little spring that goes around your finger. And then they, they have a couple of little loops. Um, and yes, that's what Alex has lent me. And I'm going to try that one next time. Um, so yes, these mittens are actually Alex's pattern um, because I love the work she's doing. She has an amazing sense for colour work um, and just nice geometric designs and fitting things together. She's, she's incredible. Um, and on that note, I am doing a knit along for Mendip yarn, um, which has already started. It's jolly exciting. Um, we've got people getting their yarn together and I think casting on sort of soonish. Um, and I wanted to talk a bit about it. So it's literally any project using Mendip yarn, um, which is my four ply locally sourced, dyed by me. Um, yarn it comes in colour pairs. It's really gorgeous. Um, it's not like amazingly soft, but it's, it's nice to feel and it's got a good toothiness for colour work. Um, which I really enjoy. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not like super wash merino feeling type stuff, but it's got a good amount of rusticity and it's it's really bouncy and nice. Um, so yes, knit along, going on until I think the first Sunday in December, so the 2nd of December. Um, so you can use it for some Christmas knitting 
or selfish knitting if you don't do that. Don't, uh, as in if you don't do Christmas knitting or you just feel like you need to treat yourself like in the run up to the holidays because I know a lot of people do. Um, there are prizes for people who participate in the Ravelry thread. Um, so first up, we've got um, a copy of the, Alex's book, uh, which is called Colour and Knit Mittens. This is almost definitely going to show up backwards for you because that's how these things work. Um, and it's signed by Alex, which is lovely. Um, I can show you. So it's got these colouring pages um, with the mitten designs on them. Um, and so you can pick the colours you're going to use to make your mittens and colour them in using the correct colours and then use it as your knitting pattern, which is a concept I absolutely love. Um, and yes, so prize number one, lovely one. Second one, which I've just thrown everywhere, which I now have to gather together. So, Mend It Yarn, eight 50 gram skeins thereof. Um, this is just a colour combination I picked because I like it. Um, but you can have any permutation of any, num any number of each colour as long as they add up to eight skeins. Um, so you could have like eight different coloured skeins or you could have like seven of one colour and then one of a contrast, you can have all of the same colour. Um, yeah, so it's all, it's all good and exciting. So if you want to enter, you just have to knit something using Mendip in that time. Um, you can use it along with other yarns because I'm really not bothered about like making sure you use only my yarn because no, nah, if you want to mix it with something, especially if it's something you've already got in stash or something you have leftovers of, use them together. It's lovely. I, I like that. I mean, I, for these ones, I'm mostly using mini skeins and um, things and like one-off colors or where I had a couple of skeins that had too many knots in them or stuff like that. Um, and then I, you know, I often like to combine different yarns together. So yes, if you just want to buy like a mini skein and use it as a contrast in a pair of mittens and knit the mittens entirely in something else apart from that, that's fine. It's all cool. Um, so yeah, join in. It's lots of fun. If you don't know what to knit, send me a message. Ask, ask me on the Ravelry thread, send me an email. I'm happy to chat because I just really like talking to people about their knitting. Um, I've been helping a couple of people already um, try to decide on patterns and, you know, work out yarn requirements and stuff. So, yeah. And yes, that is what I'm currently knitting. I'm gonna talk a bit more in a sec, and in a second about another thing that I have been working on-ish. Um, yes. I wanted to talk quite a bit about one of my works in progress because it's one that's been on the needles for months. Um, I think I started it probably in March and it's an interesting one. It's from a jumper I knit out of plain white yarn, um, Aran weight yarn, and I knit the jumper it was all nice. It fitted me quite nicely. I tried it on. It was cropped and I thought that was okay. I dyed it dark green like once the jumper was knit and I then just realised that it was actually too cropped and I was just never going to wear it. So I unravelled the whole thing and knowing that I had not quite a whole jumper's worth of yarn, decided to do a colour work project with it. Um, using some of the undyed white yarn to sort of bulk it out um, and hopefully therefore have enough for a whole jumper. Um, so I, I came up with a little colour work motif, well, actually it's not that little, um, it's Aran weight yarn so it ends up being massive. Um, I like it because these little bits kind of look like little happy cactuses to me. Um, and so you can kind of see 
There's a little bit of variation, like little flecks in the green where, um, where the seams and things were in the previous jumper. Um, and so I decided to make a yoked jumper, never having made one before. Loving it. Every time I post this on Instagram, people go crazy. It's, it's just super cool. I really like the high contrast. I really like these little bits of variegated green you get. Um, I decided to do the sleeves first so that I could work out whether or not I'd have enough yarn. And this is how much of the green yarn I have left. I was going to do the body all in green. You could probably tell that's not gonna happen. It's, I don't know how fantastically I misjudged it. I, I just, I thought I had another 100 grams of yarn and I really, really don't. So um, I'm going to rip it all back up to the yoke, um, up to here, uh, because, well, I would be quite, well, I am a little bit annoyed about that, but you know, these things happen. This is what happens when you don't do your calculations properly. Um, and the sleeves are a little bit too tight. Like I probably would have been able to get away with them. So when I tried it on, when they were sort of this long, I thought they are a bit tight, but I can probably get away with it. But now that I am going to unravel it, it'll give me a chance to add a few extra stitches for the sleeves um, when I redo it. So I'll probably do, um, I'll just redo everything up here. Um, as you can see, I'm doing the sleeves two at a time because life's too short to do sleeves one at a time. Um, I don't like transferring stitches from like onto scrap yarn or stitch holders. So I just have loads and loads of spare cables, my interchangeable needles. I always use interchange, well, pretty much always use interchangeable circulars. Um, so that I can just put end caps on them and then do the next bit on new cables. And so I've got the front on one cable, the back on another. And also check out the float game, loving it. Um, and then I've got the sleeves on another two at a time. The white yarn is getting all in the mix there. Again, I work from the inside and outside of a ball, which is fine for two colors. Don't do it for more than two colors. I'm doing that with my mittens at the moment and it's insanity. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna rip it all back. I think I'm just gonna do it now because it could be quite entertaining. Um, and it's all, well, it's a little bit sad, but there is something enormously satisfying about just, I think I said this last time about ripping up the bats I'd just made and just, you know, spent ages doing this thing and now I'm just gonna undo it because it's not right. Ooh. You can see the two at a time kinks them up properly. Whee. So I'm actually going to break one of the yarns so that I don't have to try winding. I've broken the inside one so I can just tuck that end in. And then I don't have to try winding on the inside of the ball because that's nightmarish. And as always, everything gets twisty dangled. <laughs> Should have thought about untangling it before I actually started, never mind. So when I've, um, when I've unraveled it all, I, I've realized I haven't ex actually explained how unraveling the sleeves will actually help. Um, instead of having the solid green for the main colors, the main color on the sleeves, I'm going to swap. And so the main color of the body and sleeves will be white. 
and then I'll do the um, the colour work in the white and green and then hopefully the cuffs and hem ribbing uh, in the green and hopefully I'll have enough for that but if I don't then I'll be able to do the ribbing in the white um, and fingers crossed that should alleviate all of my yarn woes. Unraveling colour work's always fun because you have to do both colours at once and they they play with each other. You have to make sure you sort of unravel them at the same rate so that you don't have stitches a few rows up in one of the colours. And I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to watch the whole thing now because my goodness. <laughs> white finished from that sleeve. There we go. This little marker was to mark my decreases, which I decided not to do many of because as I said the sleeves were a bit too tight so they were going to basically be very similar um, widths all the way down. understand a bit more why people work from sock blanks because it's really quite satisfying and it's nice to see sort of how the colours come out so where I'm every so often getting a little speckle of light green there stitches there. I don't know if you can see them. Um, so I will, well, once I've done the other sleeve, I'll go back and I'll pick up the arm stitches again. Um, and I'll cast on a few more stitches for the underarm this time round. Um, and what I'll probably do is I'll do another little bit of these this zigzaggy section to transition from the green back into the white for the sleeves. So I'll do a couple of rounds of the green on the sleeves um, and then do the zigzag and then change to the white and I'll do the same on the body. And hopefully you get a nice little zigzaggy section across there. I have to make, well, I'll try and make sure they line up um, or at least are staggered from the ones on the yoke. Um, 
I mean, doing these things, I really do make it up on the fly. <laughs> Uh, I'm not designing this one really with a view to publishing it. I'm keeping notes and everything because I do tend to um, just so that I know what I'm doing as I'm going along because as I, I, I just tend to put things down for a long time and not work on them. So I have to have notes so I actually know what I'm doing. Um, and so then... If people want a pattern, I will be able to do one, um, but I've not. It's mostly just for me and to use up the yarn. Um, you know, if I'm publishing patterns, I probably want to do it using a suggested yarn so I can tell people how much they're going to need. Um, whereas this one is not a commercially available yarn, so it's not particularly helpful for people. But then I like it enough that I might um, make another version in different colours, because uh, this is quite a high contrast one. Uh, it would be nice to do one in sort of reds and oranges and things, I'm not sure, but could quite happily make a few of them. So now I'm just picking up the stitches from the second sleeve that I frogged. Um, everything is looking fairly neat. Stitches are misbehaving just a little bit. Usually it's easier to pick up stitches with a needle that's a size smaller than they were knit on um, and then transferring again afterwards but the other needles are in use at the moment for a different project and these are the ones I had to hand so I'm just picking up all of these ones I've got my little loop here where they join onto the stitches that were for the body and then once I've got all the stitches on here, I'll work out where I am with the yarn because I haven't actually been able to work out where I joined on the second ball of yarn for the sleeves, uh, which is slightly baffling. Um, and then I will go in for take two on the sleeves and hopefully it'll be more successful. Fortunately, it's there we go. Fortunately, it's a very quick knit because, um, as I said, Aran weight yarn. I think I'm using five millimeter needles. Four point five. There we go. I could probably switch to fives. Hmm, interesting. I thought I was using five millimetres, never mind. I don't know why I would switch to fives. Tension looked the same. I will investigate what's going on there. And yes, I will then start again on the sleeves and hopefully there will be no further mishaps. I have in front of me a nice big heap of dyed mohair um, and I'm going to show you how I take it from this um, dyed mohair fleece to this nice lock spun um, art yarn with loads of texture. Um, now this, these are from the same um, fleece, so from the same goat, uh, and it's not the softest of fibres, because uh, it's not kid mohair, it's from an adult goat, and although it's not soft, it does have the most beautiful locks to it, 
which I really love. Um, and so you get these gorgeous squiggly bits. Um, and I've, I've used this mohair in um, yarn for socks because it's really strong, like it's ridiculously strong, um, it's amazing. Um, and then this yarn, um, being a lot chunkier and more textured, would be really good for things like uh, people who do textured wall hangings. Um, you could include it as a bit of a detail in a rug um, and things like that. Like, I think they tend to be better for weaving um, just because it's really nice to include texture that way, but you could also use it um, for a trim for more arty knitting or crochet projects. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show how I spin it without carding. So in the last episode I showed you how I card bats, um, but this is spun straight from the fleece without um, any kind of intermediary processing. Yeah. So I've got my spinning mill set up here, uh, I've got my box of mohair here and I've got my leader joined on and I'm just going to start spinning away. As you can see, it's a really nice freeing process because um, I'm not worried about thickness. You know, sometimes I have to be a little bit brutal with the fibre to separate it, especially with this mohair because I um, pick it out from the fleece and then I dye it straight away without washing it or anything first, um, which means that the colour can take uh, differently in different areas of the fleece, which I quite like. Um, but it does mean that it can occasionally get a little bit matted and so it just requires a little bit of effort to separate out. Some bits aren't worth using because they're too short. And all these different bits of texture, because it's going to be a two-ply yarn, so once I've spun this, I'll ply it back on itself. Um, so you'll end up getting bits of texture hitting each other in different areas. And so the thickness evens out a little bit. Um, but not loads. And it's just a really nice way to work um, without really having to think about it too much, without really just letting your hands do the work. Um, not too much concentration, just quite enough concentration that, you know, it's not boring, but it lets your mind wander, which I always enjoy. And I always forget to move it onto the next hook on the flyer, um, so that I don't just get a huge build up. Um, of yarn on this end. And this is the sort of thing that you absolutely won't get from a mill spun yarn. 
um, because it's so um, ad hoc. Just kind of you spin it as the fibre comes through. It's not been processed at all, so it's very inconsistent. And you just sort of let it do what it wants to do. And it's the sort of thing that machines can't really cope with. So I'll keep going in this manner um, until I've got through my whole box of fibre and then I will quickly show you what I do with it after that before I ply it. So as you can see I've now spun as much, well quite a lot of the fibre onto the bobbin. I've left a little space here because once the yarn is plied um, it takes up more space so I want it all to be able to fit on one bobbin. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to wind it off the bobbin um, just using a ball winder here. My ball winder isn't quite hefty enough to cope with all the chunky bits um, and then once that is done I'll then spin from the, I'll ply from the inside and the outside of the ball. So now I've got my big old cake of singles. Um, that's unplied yarn. Um, so I've got one strand coming off the outside and one strand coming off the inside of the ball. And then I just do a quick knot at the end there keep everything secure. I've to put one again here and I'll untie that at the end. And then I spin the wheel in the opposite direction. Yes, I'll keep going like this until I've plied the whole ball and then I'll give the yarn a good wash and a soak and then I'll hang it out to dry. After all that, um, I've got the yarn here. Um, so this is what I've just spun. I've just brought it in from outside drying. Still a tiny bit damp, so I haven't weighed it yet. Um, but I'm guessing it'll be probably just over 100 grams, somewhere around there. 
um, and then I will measure it out um, so that people know exactly how much it'll be. You can see it's just got bags of really fun texture with all these locks and things. Um, just like it's it's so much fun and it's just really enjoyable to work with um, for weaving and things you get this amazing texture and you've got sli very slight color variations um, in different parts of the yarn so some is a bit lighter and a bit darker that's a nice bit there look um, but yes so I will return that to the washing line outside until it's completely dry and then I will weigh it and measure it and photograph it and list it and yeah I need to come up with a name for it I'm not sure what to call it I have a sort of similar one which is actually um, kid mohair so it's a bit softer and it's a much brighter green which I call uranium glass um, and it's it's pretty luminous and it was just amazing and actually look up uranium glass because it's fascinating it's literally glass made out of uranium and it glows green it's amazing um, yes I need to come up with a name for this one so if you have suggestions leave them in the comments below that'll be fun I like things inspired by nature um, sort of an emeraldy color but that, that's a bit boring I like something that conveys some of the texture as well um, so yes, any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Thank you so much for watching along today. It's really nice that you've taken time out of your day to um, hear a bit of what I have to say and see what I do. Um, I hope that it's been interesting for you and if you have any questions or comments or want to talk about anything that I've covered in today's episode, um, do leave a comment below and you can also email me or chat to me on Instagram if that feels, you know, more friendly. Um, I always love to talk, so I really hope you've enjoyed it and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.